hey guys welcome to my youtube channel so today's a very special edition i have an interview with a commonwealth scholar and um, this scholar got a special dispensation to remain in the uk after his studies you know usually with the commonwealth scholarship you're required to go back to your country after your program so this particular scholar um, ajayi olayinka was allowed to stay back so to find out the reasons why he stayed back and to get some scholarship tips from him just stay back listen relax as him um, as you enjoy this interview with him okay mr yinka welcome to my um, youtube channel my um, subscribers have been anticipating your, your arrival and they have several questions for you already so let's begin introduce yourself your academic background and um, your academic exploits leaving out what you're doing recently <laughs> <laughs> okay uh i am olayinka josiah jai by okay. name I started my undergraduate in Nigeria at the University of Portacot precisely. And that was in 2014 when I gained admission to study mathematics and computer science. So I had my first year down to my final year at the University of Portacot, River State. I made a first class in mathematics and computer science, graduated as a BGS in my department, first writing student. So from then on, I went to uh, the North for national service. So while uh, serving at the North, Bauchi State precisely, okay. that was when I came across the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Scholarship. scholarship. Okay. And then I applied. That was in 2018, towards November, December. That was when I submitted an application. Okay. And uh, I applied to uh, Herald Watt University in Edinburgh. I applied for applied mathematical science with climate change impact model. Mm, that's so a long one. <laughs> it's a very long one. <laughs> the the interest there was applied math. So the climate change was just to spice it up. Mm. So that was why I applied for that. And uh, now we are currently in September. So let's say by mid of October I should be able to say what I should uh, get as my certificate at Air One. Yeah. So that's interesting. How many universities do you apply to when you apply for the Commonwealth Scholarship? For the Commonwealth Scholarship, I apply precisely to one university. Wow. So you were just sure of this one until you get to an out. <laughs> well, lucky you. And this was your first try? Yeah, it was my first try. Lucky you. I think I tried for, I think, two years. I started from 2015 and I didn't get until 2017. 17, wow. So you're among the lucky ones. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. So let's go to one of the um, main topics of today. So you got the Commonwealth Scholarship. Yes. And usually after the scholarship, you're meant to go back home for at least two years, I believe. Yes, at least. To implement years. what you studied. But for some reason, you're not going back home. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a question on uh, so many people's mind. Uh, I was granted uh, the opportunity to stay back for another four years, at least, because I got a fully funded PhD offer mm -hmm. at the University of Warwick. So. Commonwealth gives the grace to stay back to complete a fully funded PhD offer. So I have a PhD offer for mathematics of real world systems at the University of Warwick. So that's why I'm still back here in the United Kingdom. Well, that's interesting. So is it that after your four years you must still go back or your tired with Commonwealth is um, finished? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the condition? Well, it's according to the offer letter I was given. Offer letter from Warwick. Mm, okay, let's just see. Let's not call it an offer letter, or rather, a, a no objection letter from the Commonwealth. Okay, okay. So, which allows me to stay back. Mm -hmm. There is uh, the last paragraph encourages their scholars to return back to their home country yeah. so as to implement, you know, all those things we said we we're going to do for Nigeria. It's exactly. so sure we have to. Yeah, go it's back. time to go back home to do it. Yeah. That's fine, that's fine. So, how did you apply for this special dispensation? Just make it short. Or okay. did you contact in case there's somebody there who is interested? Oh, yeah, I just contacted my program officer. Every scholar is assigned a program officer during okay. your program. Okay. So it's expected you have a fully funded <laughs> PhD offer. Okay. You know, covers tuition and as well as uh, all your maintenance. So if you have that offer, just send an email to your program officer and then follow up from there and yeah, the rest is history. That's good. That's good. So you're specializing in mathematics? Yes, mathematics. But why mathematics? In summary. Okay, uh, right from my secondary school days, 
I just had that knack for math. I could do it better than every other thing. So oh, that's good. Why every other person? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why why waste the talent? So that was. It. Oh, that's. Good. Of course, along the line, I found much more interesting reasons to pursue maths. Okay. So back to the Commonwealth. Is it true that the Commonwealth is mostly for academically um, talented um, students? Does they give priority to first class or high second class? Instead of other scholarships, like probably Chelvin would tolerate a 2 or even the Erasmus or probably Mastercard, they might mellow down a little bit when it comes to um, academic performance. So far, it's above a little bit above average. So, what's your opinion? Do you think um, Commonwealth is about high achieving students? Okay, in my view, take note, my opinion. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say Chelvin and Erasmus actually go after those with uh, high academic performance, high profile. And the likes. Why Commonwealth is actually after those who have yeah good enough academic performance, but those who have more tendency from their from their judgment to give back to community. So I'll say those who have more uh, volunteer experience, okay. those who have shown in the record to be able to give back to their community, those people are much more considered. Because most of the scholars I met mm -hmm. in my one year of study. Okay. I would say that they all exhibited that in their, uh, in their application. Yes. But I have a contrary view though. I think um, Chelvin is more about leadership and those who have done something in the past with a lot of experiences. And that is why you can get a Commonwealth scholarship without work experience. But you cannot get Chelvin without work experience. Okay. Yeah, so that's, what, well, that's just me. That's what I feel. So I feel if you have good work experience and you have an average result, or the advice you apply to Chelvin instead of Commonwealth. Okay. That's my own observation as well. I'm not. Of course, I'm not speaking for the admissions committee. <laughs> <laughs> Though I had a friend who made barely a 3.5. Okay. Although he had a very good work experience. Okay. And he got the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 that's also tricky. But it is whether it is the exception or is the rule. That's another thing. Yeah. Whether it's one of those few cases or that's how it is every time. So as you guys must have guessed, we are both in the same university. So I'm doing politics, <laughs> and doing mathematics. So let's go to your um, go to websites while looking for scholarships. Do you have any particular website or social media handle where you go and then? Uh, I follow a WhatsApp group. Okay. So there's this uh, WhatsApp group, but we've created a network out of it, the First Class Leaders Network. Whoa, just for first class students. <laughs> oh my God, very exclusive. It's, it was pioneered by Samuel Adeleye. Okay. So he, we have a lot of information there, and we have a lot of people who have gotten scholarships in the past, so they serve as mentors. So, so what's the name again? The First Class Leaders Network. So is it just for first class students? Yeah, exclusive to first class. Uh, okay. Although to bridge that gap, mm -hmm. Samuel Adile has other WhatsApp group that you know to would help. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's and fine. I also had a WhatsApp group I created just to share information. That mm -hmm. just yes, you can go. So those are the groups majorly from which information comes. I don't necessarily visit a website and... Okay, yeah. unlike hungry people like us <laughs> hustle around and... Yeah, but that's fine, that's good. Yeah. So, do you, um, are you open to sharing your like social media handles, your... In case people want to contact you, are you open to doing that? Yeah, definitely, I'm open to doing that. Uh, the reason why I'm asking is because presently I have several essays to read. There are essays <laughs> from people applying for scholarships. And I'm beginning a PhD, as you know, we're yeah. both in the same boat and we have lots of things to do already. So I wouldn't mind having some, some other person probably giving some of my essays to, or like sharing the responsibility. Another thing is that I'm from a social science background, yeah, from a STEM background. So yeah. probably those, in, those I mean, my subscribers in the STEM background could also reach out to you to, um, you know, send them probably their proposals or their essays to that. So uh, are you open for things like that? <laughs> I'm open, but it's only for a very small niche okay. because you can't really. We, we don't really give the. We are not. We don't really have the rule base to decide what essays right. are perfect. Yeah. What essays course, would, would get the marks, would get the point, yeah. and there's no guarantee that uh, reviewing your essays essay that you will get it. But the there, there's the, the chances are higher because we we'll probably know how an essay should look like or what should not. Well, come on, we've gotten two already, so probably you know one or two things. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm open, clear. but just for a small niche. Yeah, and of course, based on your own schedule and your convenience. Definitely. Yeah, I don't want somebody sending me an essay today and tomorrow you want it already. Come on, how about <laughs> this to do? So this is a more controversial one. It's about um, scholarship 
consultancies. There are a number of firms, you know, asking um, students to come around to get tips for scholarships and actually um, ask the students to actually pay for it. And the funny thing is that, is that uh, most people who run this um, scholarship consultancies are uh, past scholars, for instance. Probably they had the Commonwealth or the Chair of Nino or Standard Bank or something. So what's your take on um, commercializing scholarships? Okay. My opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do not see anything wrong with whatever they do. Because okay. each person has their ideals okay. and morals and judgment. They have their motive. Or whatever action they take okay. so in my opinion i created a whatsapp group to give room for everyone to you know get the information out there mm -hmm. so whenever anyone commercializes it is only based on the ideas but i don't feel it's you don't something think I anything do. wrong okay you won't do it it's not something i would do but, but you don't find anything wrong i don't find it. anything wrong but why wouldn't you do it okay i won't do it because if it's as regards making money okay there are other means readily there are other ways i could sell my skills my talents and you know, make reasonable amounts from it because as regards scholarship application there is no way you can guarantee that even those who are gonna pay money yeah, we'll get to it. you would yeah. get it so yeah. i feel it's the, the the chances of them getting it is very low so why why make money out of it and the problem is that they even share stories and i have no problem with this story success stories but you do not share enough of failure stories so for instance, I say, I have a, con a consultancy for instance, and I say, no, um, 40 of my people, of my customers got scholarships. So what I don't say the number of those who, that did not get it. Yeah. So probably I have like 200 and just 40 um, got it. So that is like, I'm just giving half truths. I'm trying to impress more people to come. But that is not even my concern. My concern in particular is micromanaging. You know, when money change hands, the customers can demand a particular kind of service. They can also entice you to do more. Yes. So I think people might be tempted because of there's money there to do what beyond what they're supposed to do. For instance, writing a personal statement for somebody, for instance. For instance, my technique of reading through statements is that I give observations. I might tell you that this particular sentence or paragraph is not clear enough. Kindly rephrase. Well, I tell you what I think is missing, what you should add, or what you shouldn't put in the first place. And that's just, I'm not rewriting for anybody. But when money starts changing hands, and I've gotten lots of offers, that guy, commercialize this thing and write it for me. I'll pay you, or I'll give you my first allowance when I get here, or something. Like. So these things are, when money starts changing hands, there's always this temptation to go beyond what you're supposed to do. Yes. And for me, that's borderline academic fraud. Uh, so what do you think? That's why I said it depends on each individual's ideals. So, if any, anyone who would decide to commercialize scholarship applications and all that should always have his or her ideals and boundaries, his or her limits. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to money, you will be so surprised what people do in <laughs> yeah. the name. Every man of has money. a price. Come exactly, on. every man might has not a be price. In, might be in dollars it or pounds. Exactly. So, <laughs> someone like me now, I try to not even put myself in that shoe. So, whatever I can avoid in the first place, I avoid it. And yeah, that's it for me. So what's your general scholarship tip? I know there are lots of people now online writing essays and going crazy about scholarships. So what's your, your basic scholarship? Program? Okay, there's just one approach I've followed and it has helped me and uh, I tell everyone the same thing. Try not to chase after everything. Okay. You, you improve your chances of success by going after things you know that there are higher chances for you. Okay. For example, example, while I was applying to the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, I saw other courses I could have applied for. Okay. Financial technology, I have a mathematics background, I could apply for it. I saw something on uh, uh, mathematical biology, ecology and medicine, I could have applied for it as well. And uh, I didn't sign up for either of those options, deliberately, because I know that those who are those who are financially inclined as regards their discipline will apply for financial technology. The pool is wider for them to select from. And they could have an edge over me based on something else that they know that they could write about. Uh, as regards mathematical biology, I had very little to write about as in that field. I had very little to submit there, even if it's mathematics. So I didn't bother. Yeah. But Mathematics, uh, applied mathematics and climate change. I had so much to write about. I had experiences that were in line with uh, climate change. I had things that would would uh, drive home my my point very clearly. That would uh, convince my 
viewers. So I rather I, I, I rather went for that option. And the same thing I did while applying for my PhD fund. I saw other options as well. You went for the particular I went for a particular one. Okay, final question. Why the UK? Now I'm two degrees in the UK. It wouldn't mean I had to go to Germany and then decided to come back. But you decided to just stay here. So why the UK? Did you try other places or just the UK was comfortable for you? That was it. Uh, in all honesty, I had uh, options with uh, Canada as well. Oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That's another favorite destination. Yeah, so, but I, I didn't get quick response from there. So I didn't bother chasing it but the uk because i wouldn't have to take gre yeah oh, so that's a good one that's a good <laughs> i didn't look towards the us that's a good so the one. uk was quite easy to just go around my yeah, application right. yeah okay so any final words for people although you can always come back because we're just close by here <laughs> so if they insist that there are some questions you've not answered i can always drag you back and definitely yeah so any final words for our, our subscribers yeah. here uh final word is just try to Believe in yourself as much as you apply. Okay. I made just one application, got it. I made another for PhD, got it. That doesn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm very good at it or uh, that's the best approach to it. But because there are some other persons I have seen, they applied six times. Believe me, six times. And they got it the sixth time. So you just have to persevere and believe in God. Pray. It's not the work of mine, but the work of mine. <laughs> Anybody definitely will be getting it. So that's my final word. Okay, so I lied. That's not your final word. Final <laughs> question. Scholarship is not for everybody. True or false? True. Why so? I have seen some persons who want to apply for scholarships. And they have a third class. Okay. Some even a second class lower. I've reviewed some essays. And I just feel that this person could probably have more things to invest in than investing in scholarship. So believe me, yes, scholarship is not for anyone. It might be sad to say, but coming from me, I tell so you. So from this uh, parameters you give, a third class shouldn't bother, a second class shouldn't, a second class lower shouldn't bother. Is that what you're saying, or they're trying to modify it a little bit? That's not what I'm saying because okay. if you have a degree, you know, you don't, you don't really meet up with, with you know, the second. Class. You should have something else to, to come to and compensate for it. For example, I know of someone, probably not to want to call his name. <laughs> he has a second class lower, but he has a very strong background in his volunteer, in his leadership. This guy has awards. I also know somebody like that. Exactly. <laughs> he has awards that, you know, if you should see his is uh his application profile, his yeah. profile you would want to take that person in because of what they are yeah, they've done outside aca aca yeah, outside yeah. the academics so that's what i'm saying if you don't even have a first class or a two one it doesn't matter what else can you show for you to compensate for that lack? yeah so you should make sure your, your application is competitive in the first place exactly because those yeah. who are coming with the first class with two one who my first class i have to wait for two years remember so exactly it's it was even worse for me because I had to change discipline. I was changing discipline. It was a little bit more so, dicey. Yeah, more dicey. Yeah, I had to leverage my work experience as my own transition into a new discipline. And, yeah, that's it. So thank you very much for coming. I can always you. invite you next time. <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be glad to show my face anytime. Yeah. Just... So remember, it's um, open to reading your essays and everything. It will take some of the stress off me. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, you just share my uh, my social media handles after this. Yeah, yeah that's good. Okay, thanks All for right. coming. Thank you very Let much. Let us bomb print. <laughs> <laughs>